So, welcome to part three. So, what I'm going to do here first is uh, I'm going to take apart everything because um, we had to weld in this piece. Um, this is the bottom brace for this. Um, it would have been more sense for me to drill the hole through it first before I welded it on, but uh, yeah, you'll see. I welded it on first and then I, uh, then I drilled the hole through. It just makes it harder. I should have done that for the first part too. But, you know, I was just doing this how I felt like doing it and I was making it up as I went along. So um, all I'm doing here is I'm just deciding, generally speaking, how I want to do this. I end up putting it on the inside and then basically I clamp the two pieces together down on it on from the plow. So it kind of gets squished in between. So that's about that. So let's just mock this up and then we'll get to weld it and uh, drill in the new hole in it. So I weld that guy on there and then what I do is I uh, clamp this metal piece down and uh, it took a while to get this lined up. I, uh, I'm going to spare you from watching that and then basically I just oil this and start drilling. Um, it's going to take a little while to drill through this but uh, yeah in, in that little glass I have some just oil that was sitting around of course I couldn't get it out. but. Uh, it's oil and I think it's transmission fluid mixed together. Just something that was sitting around so I figured I'd just use that up. And we just gotta drill through this. Um, the alignment does not have to be completely perfect but I got it pretty close. Um, just because you want the bolt, what I end up doing is putting a bolt straight through the top. You could actually do a bolt on the top and a bolt on the bottom and just secure them down. And it might make more sense to do that in some scenarios, but like I said, the alignment didn't have to be perfect because I was doing a slightly smaller bolt, so it had some wiggle room. But uh, for what I'm doing, that's fine. Um, and yeah, that's that. Okay, so we're just going to put this back on as a temporary fitment um, and we're going to throw a bolt through the center and make sure it lines up really well and then uh, basically that's the gist of the up and down part. Um, i got to come through and just tack a little bit more together. Um, if I have a MIG, MIG welder it would have been way better because of this thick material so you know it, flux core has a lot of limitations when you get this thick but it worked okay, so I'm not really too worried about it. Um, if I break anything, I will fix it properly. Um, but yeah, so I'm just running a bolt through the center, and I'm just going to put everything on there loose for the moment. I come back through and I'll tighten this up at the end. But uh, 
right now I'm just getting the alignment, making sure it's all right. And, you know, I gotta make some adjustments to this and see, but more or less, that's, that's the, uh, the up and down section. So what we're gonna work on next is we are going to build the part to control the side movement. Um, in the beginning, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do side movement, but it's actually pretty easy to do. You just have to add a bar to the side and then um, make it so you can adjust it. So I'm gonna start working on that right now. So what I did real quick here was I found that piece of scrap that came off the other side that we used and I'm welding that right to the top of the plow and that's just going to give me my outward area of my uh, control to turn the thing side to side. Um, so I really should have cleaned up the uh, paint off of the uh, plow before I welded this but uh, I was just being lazy at this point. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just tacking it on there making sure that this works and I, uh, I'm going to end up tacking that holder up to the top. And this bar that came that I'm using right here is just for the, uh, it was for the snow blower so you could turn the uh, spout side to side. So I'm just reusing it. I'm not changing it very much in case I decide I want to use it again as a snow blower because uh, none of this really is affecting the use as a snowblower. I used some parts that were extra I cut up for the, uh, the mount for the plow. Alright, so I welded that on a little bit tighter now. Uh, I actually cut back through and weld this again one more time. I don't know if you'll see it later on. But uh, what I need to do now is I need to build another little extension arm. And none of this is pretty, like I say. It's just meant to be functional. So that's going to get welded on to there. And then we're going to break a... We're going to put a a washer on the end of it that'll hold the uh, the bar that you turn the entire front with and I have this feeling that a future modification I will make it so it can lock in place so because it does get hit sometimes and wings the bar at you and you'll see in the final product what it looks like um, I did a little follow-up video that will come out after all this and it shows a couple things that I need to change in this design but nothing major I just need to make some stops and things um, so I think my thought is I'll probably make the side to side lockable. Um, I will probably put a pin down the center so I can lock it in any place I want. Um, but I haven't done that yet. I haven't decided if it's necessary. I really want to run it through a snowstorm and see if it even works. Um, I, it is not a perfect design by any means and I'm not claiming it to be. I was just doing this because I didn't like the way the uh, snowblower worked and it was way too heavy and I didn't have the weights for it. So uh, the other thing that you'll see after this video is I will be showing you how to do how to lock the differential on this which is actually kind of interesting um, because this is a peerless uh, transmission in this because it's so old. Um, the transmission is on this tractor, it always shifted a little weird because it's old, you know, it's got some play in it, but the transmission actually worked perfectly fine. Um, took it apart, everything looks perfectly fine on the inside, uh, and you'll see that. I just re-greased it, welded in some, uh, uh, some washers into the differential, so the differential is locked now, and uh, it works perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, I'll show you in the video that'll be coming out after these ones. Um, not sure when I'll get to it. And uh, that shows how to lock the differential. Um, you know, I'm using the flux core welder, so it's not the prettiest job, and you'll see it. It's, it's a big mess on the inside of the differential because the grease is so old. And it's never been serviced in, how many years is that? 86, 96, 90, 30 years, give or take, it has not been serviced. And the grease honestly wasn't that horrible on the inside. So, messy. I don't have a parts cleaner, so that kind of made it a little hard to get everything super clean. But uh, I made a big smoky mess when I welded it all together. So, you'll see that coming up. So, all you're seeing right now is uh, I am clamping on the washer to where I'm going to weld it on. And uh, I end up more or less tacking it on right now and then coming back through and welding it solid later on. So I'm just trying to get everything into position 
make sure it's gonna work and then I do the final welds later. So you'll probably miss some of that because I don't think you need to see all this twice. So here we go, we're gonna weld on that washer. Um, like I said, I more or less just tack it on here because it needs to be uh, tested before I go through and do everything as the final. Um, and another thing to note, and you won't see it in this video, I did it after everything cooled down, is you need to paint, or well, scrape everything off with a wire brush and then paint everything because all this will just rust almost instantaneously. So I painted everything right after I got this all welded together final when it was finalized. So you can't really see much here, but I'm welding the washer on. I am working on this, making it so I can see things a little better with the GoPro. So now we are going to clamp this directly on here and we are going to weld it. That's the gist of it. It just kind of hangs in there. It doesn't need to turn, it just needs to pull back and forth. So that goes there. I just want it to get in good position. And then we clamp it down and we're going to weld it directly on. So. And this position ended up being all right. It's a little too far to the, uh, if you were looking at it from the back, it's a little too far to the right, but it's not bad. You wouldn't really want it too much further out because it sticks out pretty far to the side. Uh, you could change this. I was just using the scraps I had basically, but you could change this to where it's not gonna hit anything. You could also put a stop on the back so it doesn't hit the, uh, the hood on this tractor. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, another thing to note with this tractor, I did lock the differential, um, which means it will tear up the lawn a little bit when you're mowing, because this, this tractor I do mow with, because it mows really well. Um, I don't really care for my property because it has uh, lots of roots and all kinds of other things, and it's not pretty lawn, pretty grass, so uh, I don't really care if it tears it up a little bit. It won't get stuck as often, and that's super obvious, so just something you need to be aware of if you're going to lock a differential. Okay, so we're going to weld this on, and after we weld it on, um, it's not 100% welded yet, but I wanted to test it to make sure that it actually was functional. So you can see how it sticks out to the side. It looks a little further out than it really is, but it, it's, it's out there. If you pull it into the all the way out, it's in the... Uh, it's completely out of the way, so that's probably how it'll be stored. Um, but honestly, this is a quick thing. If you need to take the pile off, it would be less than a five minute job. You know, pull out the bolt. You could even leave the base on the tractor and the plow would completely come off. So I kind of like that about it too. Um, you're gonna have to take out a little pin on that sliding part as well. But that's, we put that in after we get everything welded on. Here I'm just finishing up the welds, going through, welding everything together really well. Um, like I said, all this I'll clean up afterwards and paint. Um, if you want it to be really good about it, you can grind it all down, make it look nice. Uh, I'm not a perfectionist, I don't care what it looks like. So I just painted it so it didn't rust after I scraped everything down with a wire brush to make sure it was nice and clean and nothing was on it. So the final thing that I do here is I weld on the bracket to um, uh, the arm that lifts the deck up and down, and that's just to hold the, uh, the directional piece up out of the way. So I weld that on, um, I had to grind off the paint there and weld it on, and then uh, we could push the bar right through there, and it's actually on there right now. Um, and then you can control the side-to-side -side motion. Um, once that's welded on, this is basically done. Um, the picture of it when it was done, you can see that, you know, it's not perfect. The, the plow is off to one side, just a hair. I don't care about any of that. It'll work fine for what I need it for. It's not gonna do heavy-duty stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it just needs to be cleaned up. I ended up painting it. Um, 
and uh, it seems to be pretty functional. I took it out. Um, I'm I pushed on some some piles of dirt and stuff just to see because it hasn't snowed recently. Um, and it did all right. Uh, I, like I said previous to now, um, it needs some some blocks welded in on the sides to stop it from going too far. Um, I don't see that as a big deal, and I'm I'm gonna do that very shortly. Um, I think the bigger problem is you don't want it to fold forward on you, so I need to put a brace on it that just stops it from going too far down. Um, it, it's actually super nice when I tested this. I took had the brakes off after I did the lock the differential. Um, it's super nice to have it because you can use it to just stop the, the tractor too. So if you have the plow down, the tractor doesn't go anywhere. I just, I kind of like that because the brakes don't work. But I went through and I fixed the brakes on the tractor too. They work great now. So it, it's 100% done as of right now, minus the blocks that I need to weld in to stop the, the, uh, the blade from going too far. So that'll be the next thing I do. Um, I may do that in the video that shows you what it's like and how it works at the end. Um, I may have a little follow-up in between because I haven't. I don't know when I'm going to have a chance to weld those in. But uh, yeah, it seems to work. Um, the only thing that I didn't show you here that I want to mention is the bar that lifts it up and down is adjustable. So I screwed it all the way down to the bottom. It still needs to go a little bit further, so um, I'm going to adjust that a little bit too in the final, the final rendition of this. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's it for right now, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.